Welcome, everybody, to the Victory World World Cup of VGC, sponsored by Elgato, Metafeet, and GG Tour. My name is David Partington. I am joined by the wonderful Connor Johnson. How are you doing? I'm doing quite good today. You know, I'm happy to be back doing some Pokemon casting and being alongside a great UK-based duo, so that's always fun. And I've seen some of the teams as well, so that's going to be looking forward to that as well. Very strong indeed. So yeah, we've got a very hype four matches for you today from rest of the week of the second week of the group stages. So being the Sunday, we have the most information available from the rest of the week. As most people seem to play their matches on at the weekend. So we've got a lot of like kind of potential deciders again for these next four matches. Yeah, it's always good to see his matches on the final days because, you know, especially at this point in the, in the tournament as well, where this week could be the one that sends you through. It's the middle of the group stage. We've got a little bit of a break later on. So, you know, players are having to play their heart out this week just to make sure they can have that break for Worlds and be nice and easy. Maybe do a really good at Worlds as well. If not, have fun with your friends and then you can either come back to the tournament and you're going to be going straight into those top cup matches or you can just chill out, you know, and stay in the servers or have fun. So... You know, it will come down to those crucial last minutes depending on what you do after the break. It certainly is. So um, a very good opportunity to be prepping for this stuff and potentially to bring out some stuff that you want to like test for Worlds itself. So anyway, let's jump into um, our first pairing of the stream today, which is India versus Hong Kong. So India versus Hong Kong have already had quite a few matches for this, for this group this group stages of the second week as uh the india are already up five and one versus hong kong um so that is going to be an interesting match because even though it is already already india has already taken it it still very much matters as to how much more uh wins india potentially gets because it we're looking at when we look at the brackets it gets a little bit more interesting but as you can see we've got uh, brazil versus norway as our second match we've got switzerland versus chile as the third and china versus australia as the fourth so especially looking at that fourth match you do not want to go anywhere before the end of this stream yeah all those powerful players coming in like you said they're all coming to those even if they've won they still those last few games maybe to try and get that Top to the top of the group or second in the group by points differential because they can mean everything in these groups because you know when you go into the next bracket you could be facing the best in the world if you come second in your group or you could face a slightly easier team on paper at least if you come first in the group so playing for that is going to be very crucial but you know for some of these players you know maybe they're just playing against a friend or maybe a well-known person just to kind of say hey you know my team we've we've already won the week so let's have a bit of fun or maybe we've already drawn the week so let's have a bit of fun there so you know couple of grudge matches, couple things here and there, which would be fun to watch. Yeah, it should. So let's have a look at like a uh, little bit more in detail of India and Hong Kong itself. So as I said, like they've kind of had the five and one win already. And but that's come off the back of India doing pretty well in their last week. But having only just drawn it versus Thailand, where they had a very strong um, like qualifier stage where i think they potentially went undefeated so they did very well there um whereas hong kong have actually won their week one so they've they've already come into a win for the first week um and then a, a loss for the second india have a draw and then a, and a win and but it still so it still kind of makes a big difference for india to get this a further more of a lead for the next Part. But before we get into that, just remember you can join the community for Victory Road on Twitter, on YouTube, on Twitch, and Discord, of course, where you can get all the latest updates. And also, do not forget to check out the World Cup and VGC website, which has all the matches and very up to date um, teams and match results as soon as they're coming in. So it is very much live, and you can very much keep up to date with how all your countries are doing. Yeah, keeping up with those countries is something that would be very important because, you know, in the future, you could be the prodigy that makes up maybe a team's roster. Maybe they're looking for that 12th player who will really sweep under the rug and then come against these top players and they're going to think they're an unusual player and you can take that victory. Or you can just have a bit of national pride and cheer your team on. If you're still going in tournament, then congratulations. If not, you can maybe choose to cheer a different team on. Maybe you're nearby to that country or your friends in that country and that could be the one for you. Exactly. So now you can see the Hong Kong and India 
matchup or the roster as we can see that i've been very keen to get us towards so uh as you can see uh india are five and up versus the one for hong kong here so um looking at some of the teams that there, there's not particularly one team that either team are kind of going for but interestingly ray quasar on hong kong's end which managed to take a game it looks like but uh we have vishy versus sam ung for this game itself yeah vishy versus sam ung i know a lot more about vishy vishy has appeared on of course a lot of the top tables and top finishes for tournaments using what is normally called the hyper offense core having super strong pokemon that goes super fast and just stop your opponent from attacking so hong kong have to build into that and looking at what both teams have been playing maybe knowing the top players from each team are going to be sharing teams around have built into either having their own hyper offense to really stop that or just super bulky teams to then go and break into that as we can see we have like the slow bro team that's very popular from the italian regionals we have a couple of the the uh Kirem versions of Hyper Offense. And as you said, we've got that really weird Ultra Series looking team in the Rayquaza plus Xerneas, which I would have loved to have seen that go down because it's got some funky Pokemon. But that then went and faced into another very common Hyper Offense style of the Zash and Kyogre. So, you know, predicted rate going into teams, but Hyper Offense took the upper hand. And, you know, maybe we have to see what these last couple of matches do to throw up things. Maybe they can go with a bit more fun teams, knowing they've got that victory in their, in their grasps. Yeah, and Hong Kong seems to have used quite a few Zations there, as we can see, whereas uh, it's a little bit more of a mix-up on India's end. So we'll have to see if Sam Ung also goes for that. I know he's had a, a quite a few, a, quite a variety of teams over the few weeks that he's played as well. So it's hard to kind of predict what he's gone for, whereas on Vichy's end, he's had quite a bit of success himself, um, as I believe he is 4-0 and oh in, the, in the current World Cup. So... And here are the players here with their accolades. Yeah, some really good accolades are up to As I said before, Vichy has had all those finishes, you know, top 16 at least we've seen on the screen here. Just going to all these 2020 events onwards, a couple of 2019 format finishes. So, of course, they know a bit about the restricted format. You know, of course, I say a bit, they've got, got those top cuts there. And we have Sam on the other side, who has played in the Asia Players' Cup, who got through to the Hong Kong qualifiers as a finalist. Which, you know, it's always really good to see because, of course, a very different circuit over in the Eastern world of Pokemon. Meaning, you know, that you, know, you have to show a lot of skills to believe they're very best of one heavy and also single elimination heavy sometimes. So getting that far is really good to see from a player. Whether or not that affects their best of three, you know, talent, you know, we don't know. Because sometimes you see some tricks up their sleeves, which is really different from what we see in the Western world. Which is why they get, you know, these upper hands on the players and are both in their region and over here. Yeah, and Sam Ung did get um, 12th at the Hong Kong Nationals recently, and fortunately he did top 8 for the world contention, so he was really close at getting in. Um, so I'm um, sure he's kind of like venting all that like frustration now into this match and into the World Cup, where which is arguably maybe even bigger than Worlds itself. So let's see the teams here. So Vichy's end, Swordfish, Kartana, Indeedy Female, Reggie Drago, and the Tornadoes Incarnate. Um, whereas on Sam Ung's end, Incineroar, Groudon, Lunala, Grim, Star, Venus, or Charles, a little bit more standard. But uh, kind of, I want to talk about the Red Drago. Yeah, Red Drago is something really fun. Obviously, you always see its brother, its partner in crime, the Reggie Alecki, going on to these teams. But Reggie Drago has really been swept under the rug because, of course, the Pokemon like Zacian having Play Rough. And if he doesn't have Play Rough, you can't really hit it in return with the stab moves. But if you can get around that, I think Reggie Drago can be a good back of the a team mon can come in late game and to sweep for his pokemon that's really strong i believe it's just called dragon energy or whatever it is which is basically just water spout but dragon typing so if you can catch opponents off guard of that that seems like it'll be really powerful and i've been caught off guard by it on ladder a couple times now yeah it's an interesting version of the of swordfish which is which he's apparently been using um Zashin ogre for like the past like three weeks and all with like a little bit of an adjustment here and there. Like he's he's kind of used Urshifu for a little bit, maybe over like what used to be like the Landris Therian, probably on a, traditionally what is a Gatti Rain. And then he's now switched like the Landris up to like a, a Reggie Drago as well. So um, he's kind of, it seems like he's really comfortable with like a certain core and then really spices it up for the next match, which is like per kind of perfect for the World Cup. Um, Cause like you obviously got to want to go for what you're comfortable with, but if you're already going for comfort, someone may be able to uh, take advantage of that. So with a little bit of a switch up every time, he keeps his opponents guessing. Yeah, and keeping opponents guessing is something that we will see in these first couple of turns as we see a double steel lead coming out. 
with the Zashin and the Katana into something that it might not like seeing too much in Charizard and Groudon. Of course, Groudon hitting Zashin super effectively with most of its moves, I'll say 50% of its moves. And then that Charizard couldn't hit both these Pokemon very hard. So it's going to be a bit scary of a Vichy to kind of navigate the field and probably going to rely on that Koga coming in as soon as possible to mitigate the fire type damage that could come out and take some hits very nicely. And we see a choice specs on the team preview there, which could make it a a lot of damage going out, even if it does take a hit from a Precipice Blades. Yeah, it'd be a huge amount of damage, actually. But yeah, it's interesting to see the Kartana like, lead versus this team, because you could potentially have five move on the Groudon, five move on the Instant Roll, five move on the Charizard, so it's a little bit of questionable. But I can imagine that, if, especially if, like, for a Grim Snarl lead on Sam Ung's end, um, you're able to just completely like knock it out, especially with an Indeedy switch in. So um, I suppose it kind of does make sense, and especially if you've got maybe a dark move on it, um, you might be able to hit the Lunala really hard too, which otherwise is going to be take a lot of hits. But instead, we see the switch out from Growler into the Grim Style to preserve, preserve that sun in the back for when an inevitable Kyogre potentially comes in on Vicious End. Yeah, keeping that preserve is really good because it, you know he does get to you know watch the field a bit and you know control the weather for his Charizard as well. So not only stopping the power of War type moves, but boosting his own Charizard's moves twofold with this solar power and the sun boost, and it's just going to go big with that as well. And obviously Vichy not going for the Dynamax, possibly thinking it's the Kartana or it's just going to go down. Or it's just got to focus that item. The Behemoth Blade does a massive chunk into Charizard, just trying to get rid of it as quickly as possible. But it does choose, as I choose to live, it does decide to have HP for to live. And Grimstyle takes a lot of damage on that, I'd say about 40%. You see the Air Stream come out here. It's probably going to go into that Kartana and it does grab the KO, meaning that, you know, we're going to have a speed boost on Sam's side and Vichy has got a Pokemon that can take on that Groudon, gone down, and the Kyogre might be forced to come in, meaning that Groudon will control the weather again. Yeah, even though Sam is kind of forced to go for his Dynamax like turn one to really make the most of the Charizard, he's definitely come out on top after this game one because, as you say, Connor, he's still Groudon in the back. Grimmsnarl is in, which, like, even though vichy has got some chip on it with a Sacred Sword, unless it's Sash, it's kind of a wasted hit, you know, he's got like a Behemoth Blade that can just knock it out easily. So um, it's kind of sitting there still being useful. However, saying that, Indeedee has now come in, so it's not going to be able to go for the Trick or the Thunder Wave, which Grimstar already likes to do. Um, and, but like Reflect's not going to save this, this Charizard from a potential KO. But the really crucial airstream I really like here because you now offer so much threatening damage. And what you can do as well is you can Sam Ung can potentially switch out his own Grinstar into his Kyogre, and because it's probably the slowest thing on the field, even if Vichy was to switch in his own Kyogre, Sam Ung would still be able to get the the, the sun up for him, um, and maybe Charizard can just deal as much damage as he can. And we do see the Reflect and the Wildfire, which is probably going to take a Kyogre on it. Yeah, getting that Sashin is crucial there, as we see it does go through. There's no doubt that that was never going to happen. And the fire effect will be set up, so the Pokemon will be taking a little bit of damage as the turn goes by. And the, indeed, not opting for the follow me, showing Vichy's hyper offensive nature coming out really, really well here. Grimstar's not going to take any damage from the dark typing, but it is going to knock out the Charizard as it was very weak from its own recoil. And indeed, he often supports Pokemon who's gone and got a KO, which it could be a crucial KO in this game because there's now really nothing that can threaten this Kyogre because maybe we could have seen a max overgrowth or we could just in more max air streams go into it just guarantee it had the speed you know and just do as much damage as possible while the sum is up as both legendaries are likely going to come in here so it's going to be a war of the weather like we see all the time in vgc or we do see lunala come in though so maybe preserving that sun even more and just making sure that you can have ground on in nice position to go for those fire punches and those precipice blades quite safely knocking out vichy's pokemon but vichy knowing this matchup probably very well as i remember player should be able to maneuver it but to see how he takes that we will. And interesting though, though, it's like really not over, even though Kyogre's kind of technically, you could argue, has lost the Weather War because it's the last one in here. But uh, Vichy still does have his Dynamax. So he's able to go for a really powerful Water Moves and still reset the rain once Groudon comes in. And Groudon probably being like the main mode of damage into this Groudon too. But Sam does go up for the um, light screen here. But is it enough to be able to take any Water Spouts with the Specs? No, it's not on the Grim Snarl. Uh, but Lunala is not down to half hp yeah that uh, the ability it has is a shadow shield making sure it takes less damage even for that helping hand rain boosted specs boosted stab boosted pretty much every boost you can get on that kyoga went through on that damage the light screen coming in handy as well 
and it means that the Groudon can come in, nicely set up Sun, and it's going to force that Koga to go big and have to go for those single type, single target, sorry, water type attacks to get the rain back. But it could also be a benefit if Sam is running the wide guard version of Lunala, because you're getting around those wide guards to stop your water spell. And it DD can continue to go for those helping hands where Follow Me isn't as effective in this scenario and just get some nice damage down, get rid of the Groudon, and Lunala can't target this in DD, and it'll be a back and forth in that late game. Yeah, it's a bit of a toss up whether you want wide guard or protect on Lunala. I feel like. Um, both see like a fair amount of use and you can't really predict which it is until you really see it. So, um, and just the fact that Lunala gets White God means it's a little bit sc scary, but Vichy just goes straight for it. That's a huge water spout. So, which is pretty efficient really, as you don't take too much damage. So you can still go for the Dynamax, still make most of your three Dynamax turns, but still pretty much all your health there. So Lunala does get up the, the Trick Room. So we're about to see the interactions of speeds here. So based on Vichy's team, it is probably a, a pretty fast Kyogre. Um, and so on Sam's end, there's usually the slow crowd on too. But his, I'm concerned about like the damage output on Sam Ung's end because with a Dynamax Kyogre and like follow me, you're yeah, taking any attacks from this Lunala. Like Sam Ung might have a hard time being able to dish enough damage in this time. So we do see Didi go for the protect, however. Yeah, indeed you're going to protect, just kind of preserving itself. And a sword star hunt's coming out from the ground on, possibly reading into a follow me or the protect. Of course, follow me would have ignored any possible, you know, precipice blades, but just maybe calling it super safe and getting rid of damage. The meteor beam will be coming out from Lunala. The hope it hits, the special attack boost will come through. Of course, the power hub will be coming through. Often Xerneas used to like using that item, but it's for Lunala, it's taking it up. The meteor beam goes into Koga, does a nice chunk, but not the biggest. And the Max Geyser is coming out. We'll see how much it does in this rain. Specs, of course, is negated because the Dynamax hit about 50% there. And it's going to put a bit of a dent into that ground on me. It's going to have to think wisely going through the next rounds because, yes, it has those Prespice Blades. But, you know, indeed, you can still put some damage down there. And Kyogre, you know, now it's Dynamax has a double HP, so it has a bit of bulk to it. So, you know, it might be a bit, you know, easy of just going for the Prespice Blades, hoping you hit. But at the same time, Vichy will have an out of that, just going for sheer damage, hoping to get some knockouts and putting out Lunar in a situation where it can't really target the D D D having to wait two turns each time to attack. Exactly. And now Sam Ung seems to be in a pretty good position and as I think probably Prespis Blades maybe plus the uh Wildfire should be enough to KO this Kyogre. Um question is interestingly though, if it did end up becoming, say, a uh, Lunala versus Ndidi Endgame, it'd be, Lunala would be forced to keep Meteor Beaming into the Ndidi, and Ndidi can always protect on the final turn of the, meet, of the um, Meteor Beam. But luckily for Sam Ung, the Breast of Space is able to get the KO on this Kyogre. So um, I don't think we're going to see that interesting interaction before. So uh, Mugai's Beam does go in to protect too. So uh, yeah, Vichy, I think, banking on the the Prespice Blades missed there, and I think if that happens, I think indeed he's able to close it out versus this Lunala, thanks to having, having Protect. But yeah, Vichy sees the writing on the wall here and goes for the fourth bit. Yeah, Vichy really had that coming, getting that double Protect, you know, having that luck there. Men, you know, maybe the game felt a bit generous towards Sam and went, you know, you know they got a double Protect, so here's your double Prespice Blades hit. Well, we never know if it hit the other one. And then, of course, the Moon Guys Beam, regardless of the damage does that slot, but. Groudon has access to moves that are, are way more accurate than his Prespice Blades, and with double ups, I think it would have got some knockout, even if you're just risking going for Prespice Blades. But indeed, he's not doing too much damage, and even at that time of the day, you know, it's still going to be, you know, a long haul of doing damage into these things and trying to hope for moving the high rolls and the crits. So both players playing at that end game out, just hoping for the best of luck on their sides, and they both they both got it. But unfortunately, Sam's luck was the one that took the victory. It was, and like I think it may have just come down to the lead, like really crucially there, because like Sam Ung really came on top after that, having like the Charizard and the Groudon um, straight out already, like Sun already up for your Charizard, no Kyogre in sight, nor, nor even coming in, um, versus like a Cartana, which is not going to do anything to a Charizard, and not a whole lot to Groudon either. So uh, a, a phenomenal lead for Sam Ung, and like got rid of being able to get rid of that Zashin really early on to really help. So um, it'd be interesting to see if like Vichy maybe switches it up, maybe changes the Cartana a little bit, because um, it seemed like he was maybe banking on the Cartana being a decent Dynamax option. Um, but I feel like for um, 
opposing like Lunodon teams, especially if you've got a Charizard, Charizard's often the lead of choice. Um, but like it's kind of unusual to see it maybe into like a Kyogre team. So obviously uh, there was something quite hopeful going on there. Um, potentially, we, we haven't even seen, I don't think we saw the item on the Charizard, so potentially is that weakness policy that we sometimes do see on uh, something like this Zashian Groudon builds. Um, and hence maybe the Charizard Kyogre lead, hopefully to be able to take the water move maybe in the sun um, to be potentially get that going. But uh, we might find, find out a little bit more in this game too. Yeah, in game two, we'll probably find out a bit more of what our players were thinking of in that game one. Maybe Vicious was just hoping to just go for sheer damage with that Kartana, but seeing that Charizard came in straight away, maybe thought, okay, I'll step it back a little bit and just play it as it comes. And then when you know, maybe some players will think, you know, I'm never going to bring a Charizard to a Kyogre game, like you said, but then some team players will know my Groudon's likely slower than their Kyogre, so if Kyogre's in the lead, it is just going to you know, set up the sun, and then you're going to have the ability to go for those strong speed boosts of Airstream, and then just roll with damage from there in front of the fast Pokemon on the opposing side. Exactly. And I didn't even speak. The Charizard is Life Orb. So, um, but potentially still a, a, a good option for anybody thinking of building a Lunadon Charizard team. Maybe throw a weakness policy in there, see what happens. So anyway, we see the Charizard once again with the Incineroar 2. Uh, and the same leads for Vichy's end. So not really the switch up that I was expecting. So, but Intimidate is still a really nice thing going for Sam Ung right now. Um, straight onto these two physical attackers and offering a lot of damage output and still potentially with a Groudon switch in the back. Yeah, we've already seen the Zashian doesn't do very much, well, it doesn't do the most damage to the Charizard, meaning that it's going to do even less now with the Intimidate drop down. So Charizard's going to feel a little bit more freely to choose which target into. It could go straight for that Zashian, knowing that Kartana can't do much, or it could go into the Kartana, knowing that Zashian is getting neutered slowly and slowly over time. And if both these Pokemon with their strong fire type moves could just target into any of them, you could even see parting shot from a slow Incin to guarantee that Groudon is coming in at a safe point in the game. Nothing else can really attack it. You know, getting that sun up in front of Pokemon that might not like the sun, but does also give Vichy the freedom to bring in Kyogre. So a few mind games coming out from both players here. It could be sheer damage coming out from Sam, which would be a bit of a sweet irony in front of a hyper offense team, but at the same time, we could see a defensive play from Vichy, which is switching out into Ndidi, stopping any fake outs, and you know, giving the option later down the line to just go for the expanding forces again, or go for follow me or helping hand, to mitigate where those intimidates could be dropped down on the field. I like this play here, so Sam going straight into the Groudon, knowing your Incineroar's pretty slow, you're going to be able to get the switch advantage here and get in your sun before, say, any sort of rain switch and covering maybe for the Ndidi 2, which uh, also came in turn one on Vichy's end in our game one. So unsurprisingly, we do see a Dynamax, likely that Charizard. Um, not too threatened by the Cortana again here. And, and another Airstream again is really safe as Vichy's not brought any like Tornadus as far as we can see to be able to contest for more speed control. So an Airstream is really strong at the moment. Um, so I imagine we'd see it. And this Zashian's beam played, as you said, Connor, before is going to be a lot more weakened now. Thanks to that Incineroar's Intimidate. Yeah, Incineroar's Intimidate has to make it do even less damage. You see it goes to the green instead of the yellow and no no buffs to that with crits or anything. Ashton coming out, going to Indeedy, it's going to do loads of damage, grab the knockout as well, meaning that Sam has that speed on his side and can now just go for that snowball again, meaning that all these Pokemon are weak to the fire typing, even if not with that Kyogre, weak, going to be weak to a strong solar power boosted uh, Max Airstream if the sun can be set up again, and Vichy again is now having to think steps ahead when to Dynamax, when to protect, just getting as damage as possible, of course Kyogre with its choice specs to possibly pick up those piece Pokemon, but Groudon is free to switch out and come in with the Incin, which can get another Intimidate down and drop and bring Groudon in again, which is going to be very beneficial to Sam, getting even less damage down. I mean, this Zashian is nothing really and can be hit with anything and could probably drop to a sneeze with the power that Sam is exerting in these stages of the game here. Yeah, and I think thanks to the Life Orb on Charizard's end, it's may have a shot at KOing the Zashian even through the rain, depending on its power. So, um, and as we can see from the Zashian's uh, HP stat as well, it's almost on the lower on the bulky side too, so it could potentially succumb to that. Um, we did see energy going straight down to the airstream from this Charizard, which is pretty strong, which kind of, like, it's maybe the advantage of Psychic Seed in DD over what we've seen as a Goggles fit on, on the DD instead. Um, but still a, a nice option into what Sam Ung has, 
because of the potential Venusaur. But as soon as you don't see a Psychic Seed, it's usually Goggles, uh, especially if you think a Sash might be elsewhere to such as on the Tornadus. But uh, Charizard's able to get off one more attack here. We may see that third move um, of Charizard if it is, say, that like max overgrowth. But it is the max guard instead, as Zashin also goes for the Protect. Yeah, so two protects there is a good choice. You know, we don't know what a pivot is coming in. Of course, it means that you're not going to take any damage from the Koga. I mean, if Orange Paw is coming out into that slot, like I said, Incineroar comes in, gets into a date, but because he gets knocked out because of how powerful Koga is, it's just going to mean Groudon coming again, and that solar power boost back, that's water type moves are debuffed, and that is going to force Groudon, uh, Koga, sorry, to go big, lose its specs boost to go and get that rain set up again, and Zashin. It's just going to be a hot dog here. It's going to get cooked and going to be sent back to his Pokeball because of how powerful Charizard's going to be. I mean, that Sam is going to, you know, have more Pokemon and he's going to have more time to pivot. But of course, Incineroar being gone means that Kartana is harder to deal with if the Charizard does go down. But it's not the end of the world because Fire Punch could come out. And that's going to do a hefty amount, even in the rain, and meaning that Groudon can maybe just, you know, sit there for a bit and make sure there's no attack boosts and rely on its partner Pokemon to just get rid of the Kartana or weaken it enough that the rain is no bother even further. And I think I'd like to see Sam um, yeah, switch out his Groudon here uh, to potentially contend with the Mac Dynamax and Kyogre pretty imminently. Sam is pretty free to go for a Wildfire straight into the Zashian slot right now and get a fresh KO because only Kartana's in the back which is also going to get KO'd so it looks like Fishy's going to maybe just sack the Kartana right now um, and allow Zashian to come in uncontested once it's likely in the rain. However, Samung does have the ability to maybe go for an airstream this time as well. If he wants to kind of maybe predict this defensive play, give his ground on the speed boost, which will probably make it outspeed the Kyogre and get some crucial damage off. Because at the end of the day, Vichy can only target one of these two slots at the moment. But he may want to keep the ground on slow for now so he can bring the Lala a bit later, go for the Trick Room like he did before and just break it out from there. But yeah, Wildfire is going straight into the Kartana. Big KO. And let's see what target the Kyogre has selected. Yeah, Kyogre just is going to be doing a lot of damage on these. Of course, the Sun is going to make a damage a little bit there, meaning that Pokemon are going down. Charizard is going to be dropping. And that could have been a very good prediction there from Sam, because Sam was like, I can target either of these Pokemon down, knock them out. And then Lunana can come in and sell Trick Room for the Groudon, who is then benefiting from not having any Airstream boost. And that is going to have to, you know, push the pressure again on both players. Like last game's end game, where Sam has to hit the Precipice Blades, and then Vichy has to try to kind of call the Trick Room turns and call those misses going to happen. Let's rely on Lady Luck over and over again. But from here, it looks like Sam has the upper hand with the, with the strengths against the Pokemon on Vichy's side. But Vichy could pull it back with just the sheer power of the Pokemon right now. Two of arguably the strongest Pokemon in the format. If you do see Lunala come in and Lunala, you know, has that Shadow Shield, can take a hit from Ivy's Pokemon. But if Vichy calls it correctly, could it take a hit from both of these Pokemon? Yeah, so Vichy's looking in a really strong position now, but is it's the Battle of the Restrictors, I've just realized now as well. But uh, we do need to see a, a potential little bit of a, a double up if the Lunala is going to go down here. So um, it's kind of up to Sam on whether he wants to kind of call um, a double up into the Lunala and enable the attack with his Groudon, try, trying to get a little bit more damage out, or whether he wants to uh, protect the Groudon, predict the guys are going to the ground, into his own Groudon and get the Trick Room up. But I think if I'm Vichy, I want to be doubling the Lunala because you haven't seen the Protect either yet. So there's always that chance of denying the trip and denying all the speed control. But Lunala does this time reveal the Protect and the Zashin goes straight into it with that blade. Yeah, Zashin goes into it and then it does hit that Protect, which could be a great call there from Sam. Oh, but the soon, guys yeah. are also going to Protect and doing nothing because of that Shadow Shield. And we see a Precious Blade come out from the Groudon, which we see misses the Zashian. So a bit of a bit of sweet symphony there of all those good plays coming out. I was expecting Swords Dance to come out there, maybe to, you know, go for like a Wolf Flick moment from back in 2016, get the Swords Dance and the Trick Room next turn and the Protect. But, you know, plays, you know, got some damage down. Zashian, unfortunately, not taking the damage that won't be taken, which means Lunala is open to a double up this turn, which is going to be very scary. We see more misses. Of course, the Shadow Shield is broken because of the because of the chip. So Zashin might even still take it from here with its high attack stat, its stab, and just all the buffs that it has on it right now. 
Yeah, like that's a really unfortunate miss or something said because they lost the wildfire and I don't believe it's intimidated either. Like uh, that, that that's actually going down, especially with not that much bulk on it. So, um, and then like so they Kyogre has to like only to target one, um, and like it's looking a lot more potentially in favor of Samung there, but not just definitely over. But as we can see, um, Kyogre needs to be able to nail the KO on something here, and it's gonna be the ground on this time. So. Uh, there was still a potential for the Protect and Trick Room play there, but it didn't end up coming out, and it was a crit anyway. Um, so, I uh, would have done a heap, heap of damage to the Protect. So, uh, Trick Room does end up going up here, um, but now there is two Pokemon to contend with, and I don't think this Lunala has any spread attacks. Yeah, Lunala, unfortunately not going to spread attacks, is going to be very annoying here for Sam, and it has to pick one of you know a lesser of two evils in this situation you can try and call some protects they know that the kyoga can't protect so that could be something to target into or you can maybe just try and call maybe Zash and protecting and of course kyoga being so weak will have to be forced to go to those origin pulses you might even see what about take it with the choice specs and the rain boost even how low hp both these pokemon are so Vichy in a really nice situation and we are likely going to be going game through but it is locked into the origin pulse specs though we will note so you know calling the protect right maybe going into the zash and getting a knockout could force a very iffy situation for Vichy if sam can hit all the attacks and if Vichy misses all of them i haven't been counting my wildfire turns but i feel like this there is still like the last turn of wildfire this turn because i think we had wildfire and then charizard went down we had the Protect on Lunala, then the Trick Room, and now it's the fourth turn. So I think there's still like one final turn. So Lunala, I think, just needs to go for the Protect. Yeah, and then I think Kyogre goes down. And then you have three more turns of Trick Room where you could potentially get do enough damage for this Zacian. So uh, Origin Pulse uh, and Bohemian Blade go into the Protect. But yeah, it's going to come down to like how much damage this Lunala can do. As yeah, the Wildfire now does chip down this Kyogre. Yeah, it's going to be very scary. You know, see if it can get the damage through with its, with its strong ghost type stab, boom, guys beam, and it could possibly get a knockout here. Zashian forced to go for protect, try and start his trick room turns. You could see triple, double, quadruple protects if Vichy is very lucky. He got lucky in the last game and a bit of this game with the misses and the protect calls. But it'll be very scary though as Moon, Moon Guys Beam does come out here. Sam playing to all of his out to get as much damage down on his Lunala as, po as, sorry, as possible as it does it's enough. out there. Okay. Oh. Okay, so that's a big KO for Sam Ung there. Like, what a like, it so came down to the wire there. Um, and excellently played um, by both players, to be honest. But like, it's accidentally close. Um, so we can now actually update um potentially after here this one's finished that um india are now up six um uh, one from that but we've actually had another update that they're actually finished their week in six two so um that is a wrap for that india and hong kong six two a comfortable win for india and that should be pretty good for them when the final standings eventually happen after the end of next week because I think there are three countries in that group who are in contention for the top two slots going into week three. So that should help them quite a bit. Uh, um, so, uh, but so a nice win for Hong Kong there for on Sam Ung. Um, and a little bit of justice for how he did it in the Hong Kong next, where he was so close to getting that victory and breaking Vichy's 4 uh, 0 win streak, too. Yeah, that is a very nice victory to end on for this week. And because you know Vichy is going to be kicking himself in the in the back of the ankles because he's like okay you know I, I lost against a player who didn't have the best of luck in the past couple of weeks in both world cup and in outside tournaments and now you know he's gonna to have to rethink india got their win but could that could be a bit of weight on his shoulders because that could be the loss that is you know putting them into second place or first place giving them that harder team possibly even knocking them down to third if the other teams can pull out all their guns and show them hey we're going to get an x in one loss or an x and o loss so i haven't really checked the standards i don't know if that's possible but you know that could be the thing at the end of it but both players played very well and showing teams maybe they're unique for or known for in their cause was nice to see for this end and seeing hyper offense being hyper fenced you know was something quite fun to see as well it was definitely and like it's a shame like Vichy didn't bring out the Ray the Reggie Drago uh mode that um we were kind of like maybe hoping to see in that game too because it 
like I think Sam O switched it up to the Incineroar there, so um, not bringing the Grimmsnarl. So Reggie Drago was looking pretty good into that. Like Dragon just hits everything, and like with a bit of speed control, it could have been doing a decent amount of damage. So that could have been something cool. But uh, I think maybe Vichy was like predicting maybe a little bit of a switch up on on Sam Un's end. See if you can catch him out and just bring the Cortana anyway. But um, it was to no avail, unfortunately, and and in favor of the Charizard Lunadon team into Swordfish. So um, that ties up India, Hong Kong. And I think we've also seen from the other side of their bracket is um, was Thailand and Costa Rica. And Thailand have also won their game versus Costa Rica. So going to week three, Costa Rica are out. But India, Hong Kong and Thailand are all still in contention. So it's going to be a really interesting week three for this group. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Of course, Costa Rica, you know, being out, they can still be that calculating factor in what team does make it through finally. If they go, if they, you know, get their next two games and go for a 5 3 instead of a 6 2 or so on and so forth, they could then maybe knock Thailand a little bit lower on the ladder, meaning that even with this loss, Hong Kong can still go through, which, you know, is something really scary for all these teams, something to consider, you know, for all the teams as well, because it's. It's going to be that jump, that little push, but even a team that's out can force you out of the tournament as well, which is a bit of justice for the teams that are knocked out, but also really sad for the teams that have made it by a whisker and then get pulled down by a game or two. Yeah, that's a great point, Connor. And I think we're going to have a few similar situations to that in some of the other countries as well that we might be coming up in the next three games of this stream. So um, that was India versus Hong Kong. Fiji versus Sam and Congrats to Hong Kong for taking that win and um, putting them, like, it's, even though it's the 6-2, it's not a 7-1. So, um, and that might make the difference in this week three. So uh, next match is Brazil versus Norway, but we're going to take a short break um, before we head into that. So don't go anywhere and we'll be right back. 